Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Spotlight on Art. We're just waiting for everybody to join us. So if you would just give us one more minute, please. Thank you. Hi everyone, welcome to um, a spotlight on art today. Uh, we're just going to give everyone a, another few seconds just to join, join us and then we're going to begin. Thank you. Hi, okay, so, um, so welcome to Spotlight on Art. Uh, we have Amanda Ralph here today, our art lecturer, and Alanta Grigalonetta uh, joining us. And um, I'm going to hand over to Amanda and um, enjoy. We'll have questions. There is a question box here in your um, dashboard, so uh, please feel free to put your questions in and we'll uh, answer them as uh, we come to natural pauses and stuff okay so thank you and enjoy uh, thanks so much sonia um hi everybody unfortunately you can see us but we can't see you um i'm here my name is amanda ralph i'm a lecturer in the art department my area of specialism is sculpture and digital media um, i'm joined by a third year art student alanta <laughs> grigalunante and um, Alanta is joining us with a certain amount of expertise in that she's just re returned from an Erasmus international study trip. So I think it's going to be interesting to have Alanta talk a little bit about that experience. And um, also Alanta is a student who came through the advanced pathway. She didn't apply through portfolio uh, into the first year of the program. So that's another interesting uh, approach that maybe some of the people here uh, will be thinking about. Now, I know that there's about 85 people in this kind of chat forum, the seminar, um, so please don't feel in a way that any of you guys are isolated either. Um, I know you're working pretty hard at this stage to develop your portfolios. Um, and I was thinking myself, it's been a quite a long time since I submitted my own portfolio, but it's a real kind of a rite of passage. Um, I know when I prepared my portfolio, it was the first time I had actually taken that artwork out of a school environment and out of my house. You know, I was on the bus traveling with this very large portfolio, kind of publicly declaring to the world, you know, I want to engage with the professional art world. And I think when you submit a portfolio, that's actually what you're doing. You're, um, you know, you've you've worked away on your own, own, own materials, you've talked it through with your uh, teachers, with your peers, with your family and friends, but now you're actually taking it out of that zone into a conversation with um, a wider audience, and that audience is, um, you know, the art world, it's museums, it's galleries, but it's also the art education system. Um, and I just want to tell you that in some way uh, we share that excitement with you. We understand what it's like to step out and say publicly, this is the world I want to engage with. Whether that's you have a vision that you want to be an artist in the future, you want to work as a gallerist, you want to do public art, and um, you actually just want to develop your artistic understanding and you have a range of other fields that you will want to apply it for, apply it to. But it, it, it is a big step and it's a fantastic thing. 
we hope you're pretty excited. I know you'll be very exhausted working on your portfolio, but it is lovely to bring it out. And all I can do is assure you that myself and my colleagues, we really look forward to seeing portfolios. Um, and and it's, it's that very beginning of your professional journey. So with that, I'll just say this is a kind of moment for celebration. Um, but I think you're, you're, you're not going to be in the situation this year where you have to step onto a bus or a train with this very big portfolio. Um, you have the pleasure of uploading it to an online system. But do, do be aware that you're actually engaging with a lot of other people. Like I said, there's, there's 85 people in this conversation. Um, I'm just going to move through. We've got a lot of images. Um, I just want to be able to explain to you the sequence by which we're going to talk through this material. So it's a one hour session. Um, we're going to have a look over the BA Honours Art course. And we're going to do that by actually looking at the facilities. And while I show you some of those images, I'll talk you through some of the curriculum, some of the things that affect the curriculum, um, and our vision for how you'll go from first year through to fourth year and beyond. We're also going to talk, and I know there's been an awful lot of sessions online already, and there's a huge amount of material on the website, but we're going to tell you what it is we're looking for in a portfolio. And we're really hoping that if anything is not clear, that you'll put the questions in the chat. Now, Atlanta is going to keep looking at the chat and she's going to flag whenever questions come up. But this is your time now to ask questions. We, we'll talk forever, but please really do feel like you should contribute. And there's no question that's too silly. Um, every question you ask, there's going to be at least 10 or 15 other people listening who want to hear that answer. So we're going to talk you through the online portal and um, just let you let me kind of assure you that this isn't the first time we've done that. We've done it last year and we got tremendous feedback that people were very satisfied. It was very easy to use. And um, so we wouldn't anticipate any significant problems, but I will talk you through that. And um, we also have a concept called the virtual open day. I'll explain what that is and, and let you decide yourself whether you want to participate in that or not in that, whether it's of use to you. I'm going to send you back to our website, which at this stage is creaking with information. We have PDFs, we have videos, we have all sorts of stuff that we really want you to be able to tap, tap, uh, tap into. You know, after this conversation is over, there might be something you want to check on, and actually everything's there. Um, Alanta and myself are ready. We'll take all of your questions, so please put them into the dashboard. And if by any chance you go through this session and tomorrow morning you wake up, you've had a question you didn't uh, remember to ask, please email that to info at iadt.ie. And if you've forgotten that, I'll just say it again. It's info at iadt.ie. Um, and just put in the heading, art query about portfolios or about application, and that will get to the correct person and your information will be responded to promptly, very promptly. Okay, so with this first part, an overview of the uh, facilities, um, I just want to let you know, if you know much about Dunleary as a College of Art or not, uh, to let you know that basically the college is about 1,600 students between uh, postgraduate students and undergraduate students. We've got three faculties, which is the design of visual arts, the design of film and media, and the design of technology, Sorry, I said design department of technology and psychology. So we're quite a mixed bunch. And actually that really adds to a vibrancy on campus of all the different kind of experiences that different students are having. When you're a student in Dunleary, you do interact with students in different faculties and the college actively promotes that through a form of elective, whereby in second year at one point of the year, every student on every course in the college is kind of released to do a three-year block possibly in a department that they haven't done before maybe if you're an art student you'll go work in psychology if you're a technology student you might go work in the film department and um, so we do try to keep that ecology of ideas in a kind of um i, I suppose the campus is really a very creative campus through a number of different fields and disciplines um, so that gives you a little bit about, you know, the kind of mix of students that you'll meet on campus. Um, I'll move on through now the slide so that uh, one of the things that you may or may not have experienced, um, ordinarily a student who was applying to art school would go through the end of year exhibitions. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we didn't have an end of year exhibition in a physical sense. We had an online exhibition. 
Um, so you guys might have missed the opportunity to come and visit on campus. So I want to show you a couple of pictures. Um, they're fairly arbitrary in the order that they show up in this slideshow of what what's the experience to be in art school? What are the kind of rooms that you work in? Um, and, and, and so you can imagine maybe how that will work out for you. So let me start off with these images. Um, uh, I've just started off with this image of the Students' Union. Um, basically, uh, we're a big enough college that we have a number of facilities and resources outside just the art department. So we have an absolutely fantastic library. We have a counselor on campus. We have a doctor on campus. Uh, the Students' Union provides a number of facilities. They have this vast hall that students put on gigs or film screenings. Um, so it, the resources of, of, of a campus are there to you also, not just to what's in your own art department. Um, we do know COVID is happening at the moment and it has definitely affected uh, people coming onto campus. Um, last term we had the possibility where students who were working particularly in workshops, if they needed to come in and do some welding or some woodwork or work in plaster, they were able to come onto campus in small kind of pod units. Um, right now we've kind of slowed, we've pulled back on that because obviously the COVID numbers are so bad, um, but we are trying to facilitate limited access so people do get some kind of experience of being on campus. And um, with that, I will say to you that actually some of us are quite interested and excited about what's happening and what the opportunities in terms of blended and online learning have been. Um, I've noticed a huge increase in attendance. Uh, people are much more able to attend everything because it, uh, it can kind of suit where they are. Um, I've had tutorials with students who are sitting on their phone in the car park of Woody's, um, but it means they absolutely can attend full time. I also find it's quite dynamic teaching because I find if I'm standing in a studio, it's very difficult for me to Google a certain artist that I think a student should look at. Um, and I find it's brilliant to be able to pull up a YouTube video to uh, explain to, uh, uh, a certain concept or technique. technique. Um, and I also think in the long term, this is something that's really important for students in terms of their future. A huge amount of interviews were already shifting to online. A huge amount of work was all this uh, well, uh, collaborative work was already shifting online. And rather than art students are, are in any way feeling uh, disadvantaged or not part of a possibly a business community that would find that shift very simple, um, we're finding now that everybody will be so much more prepared for a number of these things coming up into their future. So there are positives. Um, that said, we really look forward to being back on campus. Um, in a in a hundred percent round the clock kind of situation, and um, I just started with this kind of fairly plain, simple uh, photo. This is the studio. It's the first year studio. Uh, when the first year students are gone off to do their IMA project, which is at the Irish Museum of Modern Art, the fourth years come in and work in it. Uh, we have a couple of students' studios that look like this. They're kind of very large rooms. They've got very good lighting. Uh, there's a fantastic studio upstairs, which is mostly used by the painting students. Um, and you can see it's kind of very open plan. We have kind of wall dividers that can move around. So the space is shift and change depending on what we're doing. We have the possibility to create exhibits in this area. We have a possibility to have lots of student desks and people working individually. Um, but this is basically what a studio looks like. It's not really a classroom. It is much more in the mode of an artist uh, studio. We're not just a studio based program. We do have a whole load of workshops. Um, and this is actually, and I realized when I saw the picture, it's uh, the sculpture, it's the welding shop before the welding shop was done up. Um, and it actually looks a whole lot better now. Um, but just to give you a sense, if someone is doing very technical specialist work, there are workshops whereby there's uh, plenty of equipment for them to achieve the outcome that they want to achieve with different materials. Um, so. I did say that we're kind of quite diverse across film, media, technology, um, uh, design. So our students will also book into, say, the photography photo studios and will use a setup like this with a backdrop and drapes between the studios and use lights. And they'll set up that possibly for video or photography. Uh, this is the plaster area in the sculpture studio. You can see the there's when you're working with plaster, obviously you've got to be kind of careful that you don't clog the sinks. So you need a specialist area for that. But this would be something that the art students would share with the model making students. And that creates a certain kind of hybrid where you start to see very interesting things that the other courses are doing with the same kind of materials. And um, to the left of that, or to the right of that, uh, you'll see a curroc. Um, Art students do learn a lot of techniques. Uh, 
IDT, uh, the faculty have sat down to really think about what do we want in terms of our graduates. And we have decided that the contemporary art world is very much about interdisciplinarity. Very few people are very kind of rigid in their disciplines. You'll go to see an exhibition that will have both painting and video. You'll see a sculpture exhibition that has also got some stuff that's made through digital fabrication. You'll go to see printmaking and the person will also be working with virtual reality. And in the course, we want to reflect that and we want to have students who are uh, fairly skilled in a number of possibilities. But whatever they choose, we want to make sure that they actually are experts in that. Um, so we do focus, the first year is a very interdisciplinary year and the fourth year is a very interdisciplinary year. But the years when students do most of their technical learning is through second and third year. Um, but we try to shape that up as well. So let's say in second year, you're learning some woodworking skills. And um, in this particular year, we decided that we would build a curragh in order for students to learn those very same woodworking skills. Now, we took this design from quite a traditional boat, ba boat builder, um, but you'll see that we use cable ties to actually get the willow branches to bend into shape. So it's a kind of a homage in a way to thinking and looking at traditional skills, but also how do we how do we use our contemporary technologies to achieve what we want? Um, Deliri has been a long time associated with film and television, and we have a very, very well respected animation department. And so technology has always been quite a big part of the college. Um, but we just want to reassure everybody that we're still very pleased that we're absolutely embedded in the 15th century as well as the 21st, um, and that we have a number of etching presses, and we'll use a number of techniques that have a history going back as far as the Renaissance. And um, so lo lovely big etching presses, woodwork, uh, wood block presses and, and some screen print uh, and, and, and the capacity to make quite large and ambitious screen prints. Um, but like I said, we are kind of known as well for technology and that really facilitates students who are interested either in their own work in doing kind of audio or, or video work, but also who just want to understand that field as a discipline and maybe decide it is or isn't for them. Um, within the art department, we would have, excuse me, a shared uh, facility for equipment checkout. So there'll be one source in the college where all the high-end cameras are checked out, all the tripods are checked out. And so this is really good in that you can see a range of kit that maybe a smaller course on its own couldn't quite afford, but right across all the co courses on campus, there's a sharing of equipment that different people can access and, and develop skills on. Um, this is a sound recording studio um, this is a large green screen that's in the film school and a number of our students work with this and um, a larger photograph of the photography students, photography studios. Um, here's a project and um, I do want to talk a little bit about projects. A lot of the time students will work individually on their own projects but every so often we love to throw them in the deep end and to do group projects. I'll warn you that students hate group projects because there's always someone in the group who'll work incredibly hard and someone who won't. Um, so, but it's really good because in the real world, you have to work with other people, you have to collaborate and you have to work out those tensions. Uh, this particular piece was a bunch of students who were making a performance piece um, which they were marching through Dublin city. And the piece was called, We're Putting Our Foot Down. Um, and it's kind of a Monty Python-esque uh, foot that was carried very nobly through the city. But basically, it was about emigration and the, 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 the plight of a lot of younger people who are graduating going to have to uh, emigrate. And so this was really a way of engaging in sculptural skills, but also thinking about what's happening in the world around you. Um, I did mention the electives earlier. Um, like I said, this is a time when in second year for three weeks, everybody gets sent into a different department than their, their own department. Uh, so this is a group of students who are making a very large infla inflatable pig. And it was inspired by um, the, an album cover from Pink Floyd. Um, but it's a way of taking, I don't know if you can see here in the background, a very small little inf uh, um, furry pig that we bought in Ikea, cutting up the pig, working out the pattern, uh, projecting the pattern very large scale, scaling it up. 
And then we used a kind of industrial blower to blow up this very large pig. Again, it's kind of, uh, you get to meet students. Part of this is very sociable. Uh, try to get to meet students across campus. And many of the people you meet in art college, you'll actually become friends later on. And this is really helpful if you become very friends, good friends with a graphic designer and later you need your book published. Uh, you need someone to design your book or you work with a sound designer, all of those things. Alanta, how are we doing? Any questions coming in in the chat there? Ah, there we go. Sorry, I lost your audio there for a bit. Um, oh, yeah, there's two questions. Um, one is from Anna Bates. I'm planning on applying for second year art through advanced entry. Is it okay to showcase dig digital notebook work instead of portfolio pieces? Um, absolutely. And um, do you mind? I'm going to whiz through this section and then I'm going to get to the application. Can we start with that as the first question when we get to that section? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Alanta, um, will you wave? If my audio drops out, will you kind of wave at me and, 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 and yeah. say? OK. OK. Uh, you have a second question. Will I go on and, I, and I'll hold that for that section when we talk about application? Yeah, there is one. Is there anything you offer that NCAD, for example, doesn't? Um, I'm interested in visual art. And then thank you very much. <laughs> um, there's definitely differences at, at, say, a higher level. Like Dunleary does not have a fashion department. We do not work with textiles. Um, so if you had an ambition to work with, you know, in, a, in, a, in an art context, but you wanted to be able to tap into, say, the glass making department of NCAD or a textiles area, we don't have that expertise. We do have other expertise. We do have like a film department that you may want to tap into in relationship to your art practice. So I'd, I'd really encourage you to go through the websites of all of the colleges that you're interested in and see what kind of hybrid things they have that you might also be interested in. Now, I will say that we specifically in Dunleary try to get people to work across disciplines. Not every college has been able to facilitate that. And I'd say, the way we've done it is we've actually rewritten the entire curriculum and we've now we've put these kind of electives across first, second, third and fourth year so we can encourage that kind of cross hybridity. Within the art departments in general all around the country, everybody is going to specialise in painting, sculpture, printmaking um, and 4D, which is possibly video making, performance and a certain amount of digital media. You, you definitely will be covered in any college that you go to under those headings. Um, so I, I, I don't see that we would have less um, in, the, in the core area, but I do think it's that kind of hybridity when you look across what you could add on by accessing the resources of another course. Uh, for examples like film or animation. Um, so maybe if you can kind of think about that question, if there's something specific you're looking for, uh, I can actually give you feedback on that. Um, I'll keep jumping through these now because maybe I'm, I'm, I'm taking a little bit of time. Um, again, so yeah, working in these large studios, you're kind of going to work on small in your desks, but you're also going to scale up to working, say, like this, like with welding skills. Um, I just wanted to give you that overview to tell you a little about the course, but now I want to get into first year. And this is the area that's kind of going to be closer in terms of your practice and what you're hoping to achieve. And IDT and the art department were very keen to get engage in kind of outreach and engage with the art world outside of, of the campus itself. Um, the first year students work in, in the Irish Museum of Modern Art, and they've also done a project in the National Gallery. And this is Kind of ironic because normally you'd think your graduates would go to the, the major museum in your city but actually our first years go to the major museum in our city very early on so this is a fantastic project that's been running for a number of years it ran last year and we're really hoping to stay in touch with it as the COVID thing shapes out we're waiting to have a launch for a publication that was made by these students and um, whereby they take a semester out of or a term out of college and go work in the project studios up in IMA. Um, and so we'll see a number of works there where uh, they're having to actually work on site in, in, in the museum. 
and the museum are very good and very encouraging the education department in, in working with students in allowing them to uh, modify structures of buildings to really explore all the resources that are in what is the, the RHK um, which is a very historic building um, but also to work indoors inside studios to create larger scale works um, or smaller scale works or dark scale works um, and, and they're very experimental and it's a very it really ups everybody's game to be making work in this context in this professional environment right i'm jumping now into first year um, and what i want you to do is uh, think about what it is you want to put in your portfolio I don't want you to come away from this thinking that we really want high end finished fourth year work. We're actually not looking for that. We're really looking for your inquisitiveness, your curiosity and your motivation and your ability to put yourself out there to observe and look around the world and see what's going on and seeing uh, and, and just satisfying your curios curiosity. We want you to be driven by curiosity. So this is what some of our first years are doing. Um, but this is kind of tips, you know, these are the kind of things you might be thinking about doing in your own portfolio. Um, so really, you know, your observation of the real world in front of you, and maybe an observation of what you can do with that world, how you can bend light, how you can project light, how you can throw that around, and how you can make these very, very small, intimate gestures, um, looking, you know, manufacturing images, not just through a flat surface, but through tracing paper, through projected lights, through small little maquettes. Again, using fairly humble materials, you know, cut out cardboards, but like projected light and being able to transport those ordinary materials into something quite cosmic, into another world, into another uh, uh, environment or atmosphere that you could imagine scaled up. Um, so here's an example of the kind of, you know, when it comes to talking about your portfolio, uh, we have a, a, rec a requirement that you submit between 10 and 25 um, pieces, but a piece could be multiple images on one page. And I just want you to hold that in mind. So here's what we're looking at, that you would actually have something observed from multiple points of view. So here, here here's somebody who's um, thinking about, you know, what does it look like if I take a photograph of the real world? What does it look like if I make a watercolor of that? What does it look like if I make it, if I trace the outline of that on tracing paper? What does, what am I thinking about if I look at a color palette and only look at the colors that are, are in that scene? What if I reassemble this together in collage? So this shows us uh, someone who's really enthusiastic about using different mediums. They're really curious about what they've chosen to study, what they've chosen to observe, and they want to put that through a whole di different range of things. They want to look at tonality and they want to look at shape. They want to look at outline and they want to look at color. Um, here's another couple of pages of someone's sketchbook um, and you can see they're really trying to think through problems that exist in the physical world. What if I need to make this thing roll down a hill? You know, what motor can I build to propel it? And so this is the curiosity, even if you don't even get to build it, we can see from this sketch that you're really thinking, you're working out the possibilities, so something is driving you to find a solution here. So this is, these are fairly good examples from first year of people who are kind of endlessly working and trying to solve these kind of problems, or actually even trying to describe what the problem might be for themselves. Um, here's a fantastic, um, uh, the, the, the problem is trying to how not to make the egg break, but actually the visual that's created um, in order to achieve that is, is fairly dynamic. Um, here's a, a lovely uh, piece of work just using wire. And how, how can you kind of motorize, how can you make a, a kind of machine that things will twist and rotate using these very, very simple joints. But when I say simple joints, they're actually they're very, very skilled in terms of using a needle nose pliers to bend that wire in absolutely perfect crisp lines. Um, sketchbooks, we do ask you to submit a sketchbook as part of your portfolio. Um, sketchbooks, again, really can help you generate thoughts on how a thing will be fabricated, how you can lay it out flat, how you can look at it as a 2D pattern, and then ultimately a photograph of how you might realize that in 3D. 
everybody's sketchbook is completely different. There's no one way to make it. Some people's, they're dimensionally quite thick. They're sticking in big lumps of seaweed. There's a load of masking tape everywhere. And um, some use lots of colored pencils. Some are writing personal notes, their shopping list as well. Uh, some are working at mathematical formulas, measurements. Um, but basically we're seeing the sketchbook is so busy that people are really engaged in their ideas and developing their ideas and pushing them forward. Um, and then you see some very, very beautiful kind of lyrical drawings where people are trying to think about movement and how things might work. But I will say there's no one style. Everybody's got a different way of approaching this. And um, so thinking about drawing, um, you may have had the good fortune to be able to access a life drawing class. You may not. You may have been drawing your friends in class. Um, but there's a whole way, different ways you can think about drawing. So we're looking at figurative drawing here, then we're looking at kind of landscape drawing. But here you're looking again at kind of tonal studies of lights and dark, but the person is also looking at kind of outline and how outline might work with those tonal qualities. And again, you might work, prefer to work, you know, figurative drawing, and you can see someone's just kind of capturing the eyes or just the posture or gesture maybe of their parents. And in the meantime, they're suddenly noticing that the headphones they're wearing are really interesting visually. They want to see the shape of them. Maybe they're working with blind contour drawing and they want to use not so much tonality, but a little bit to pop it out or lift it off the page. And then we look at a completely different approach to drawing. And um, here's somebody who's using I think maybe black eggs and actually it's kind of arbitrary where the charcoal gets marked on this page here or maybe tying a light on the end of a string rotating the string around their head and taking a photo in it to capture that motion but these are also different approaches to drawing so I really emphasize that there is no one way of doing it and we're not particularly looking for one outcome what we absolutely are looking for is a sense of who you are we would really ask you to be focused on observation and um, rather than reproduce or copy other images if you can start from looking at something in the real world you're actually showing us your critical thinking you're showing us how you observe something how you obsess something and um, is that still okay Atlanta is my audio still okay yeah audio is good yeah okay thank you and um, so and we're looking at your invention and your curiosity and again it can be so simple and um, you can imagine it with this image here on the on the right hand side you know somebody's just making shadow puppets and shadow play with their hands on a wall but how that kind of resonates with the rest of the image on the page we can see sheets of tracing paper overlaid on top of each other we can see someone who's really obsessed in it with different colors of tonality and we're seeing that once they've started to think like that they're seeing it everywhere else in the world too so it's really possible to start from something that seems very simple and be incredibly motivated to keep on looking in the world and, and to see observe it in the real world and, and to start seeing you know tonality or no tonality or just really very uh, large blocks of blacks and whites in the world and then once you start to see them you start to see them everywhere so observation is really important of what what we are looking for so into the portfolio uh, the portfolio should have a minimum of 10 pieces and a maximum of 25. I think, and, and you may have to find this out um, when you go to the online submission, but I think uh, each of those should be no more than five megabytes. But there's nothing to say that you can't create a whole collage of things that are in some way thematically connected. And when I say thematically connected, they may be connected by color, by tonality. Um, you know, there might be very little to say there's a connection between this landscape and, excuse me, and this urban um, um, uh, 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 poster in the street. But actually, there's a certain sensibility that crosses across these works when they get put together on the same page. So I, I'd leave that with you, and that's definitely something to think about. We're really interested in what you do in your notebooks. Um, we want to see your process. We don't just want to see very slick finished pieces. And um, we want to see your ability to think your way through a problem or through an observation or through an idea from the very first stage through little stumbling blocks, through little alleyways and diversions. Um, and so we want to see that process and we want to see those ideas as they develop. Um, and I will say to you, and you've probably seen it from the earlier images, that our students do work across many different areas and media. So likewise, show us, if it's relevant, different um, media, different approaches, 
and a variety of that. So if it's useful to take a photograph to see shadow and tonality, and then also used to, useful to do a pencil sketch at the same time, do show us both of those. And that shows us or demonstrates to us that you're thinking through this problem in a whole range of media because you're absolutely obsessed with it and now you can see it everywhere. Um, there's a fantastic booklet on the website and I'll talk about that a little bit more. And I've taken this information from it so you can review it again. But if you're wondering, what do I put in my portfolio? How, what, what kind of guide do I have? Um, we definitely would like to see a variety of observational drawings. Now, you can be drawing spaces, places, objects, people. We're not too worried about what it is you choose to draw. But we are interested to see that you're looking at things like light and tone, shape, structure, and movement, and um, maybe how things change over time. Um, I think you can kind of see this in this squished egg. And um, we do want to see a selection of your best projects, and that's up to you to choose and to decide what your best project is. It can be a, a research project, or it can be a development, a work in development, or it can be a finished project. It can still be your best if it's still in the research stage. So please don't feel under huge pressure to only have absolutely finished work. And um, that's not really what we're looking for. We're looking to get a sense of who you are as a person, what your interests are, and um, to what level you're motivated to go out and see the world and then to communicate that. We also are really happy to uh, uh, review works that are not necessarily image-based. We'd be very happy to see video clips, sound works. And if you're making sculpture, um, obviously you can't really submit a, a three-dimensional object, but what you can do is photograph it from multiple angles, but you could also make a video of it as you walk around it in three, third dimension. Um, so again, a short video can be uploaded to either show the context of the work, front and back, and also to see the environment that work sits in. Experiment and exp I had I had real questions about whether I should include this video or this image because really um, I'm not encouraging you to stick your head in a microwave, but please don't feel inhibited, don't feel self-censored. You know, if there's a work you want to make, we're really keen to see it. So go ahead and do it. Um, if you're into doing performance, um, any kind of time-based work, uh, if you've got digital work, and I think we're, we'll soon get to the question that Alant is storing up there, we'd like to see it. And um, again, your notebooks, your sketchbooks. And for some people, a sketchbook is a wire-bound folio. Uh, for some people, it's a shoebox of lots of different drawings. Um, but gather those things together and show it to us as a sketchbook. And there is that sense that maybe you could group some of those things together. If you're working on a whole series of tonal studies, if you're working on a whole load of sketches about um, whatever, whatever thematic subject you've chosen, maybe put them together or put them in some kind of relationship to each other. And um, you could also show your notebooks in some kind of uh, video sequence. You could be turning the pages or laying the pages down to show us that. Okay, um, I'm thinking that possibly we should get to some Atlanta questions um, and we'll be ready to take them now, Atlanta. That first question okay. I jumped on ahead of. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so by Anna, I'm planning on applying for second year art through advanced entry. Is it okay to showcase dig digital notebook work instead of portfolio pieces? Uh, fantastic and definitely yes. Um, we're not specifying only finished work, only notebook work, only analog work, only digital work. Um, I'm trying to imagine what you mean by digital notebook work, but I'm imagining that you're working in things like um, Adobe Photoshop, you're collaging images together, you're working in Illustrator and drawing programs, uh, you may be taking photographs, digital photographs, and re-editing them in different ways. Yes, we're very keen to see digital work. And um, what we are looking for is that kind of sense of observation and a sense that you're thinking through what you're doing. So you might want to show us a sequence of stuff. Maybe if you take a photograph, you might want to show us the original. Then you might jump through a, maybe a collage where you're drawing digitally on top of that. You know, there might be a whole sequence that you pull that thing through. But show us every step in that process so that we get to understand your thinking and we get to understand what's driving you to make those works. Okay, Alanta. Yeah, the next question, um, is there a set time limit on each project that is assigned by Martin? 
by Martin. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> the question was um, asked by Martin. Oh, sorry, Martin asked the question. I thought Martin was setting the time limit. No, um, um, I'm not fully sure about the time limit on that. We don't. You could spend two years on a drawing. Um, well, actually, that was one of the things I learned when I went to art school. I think before that, I thought I'd never spent longer than 20 minutes on a drawing. Um, so when you say time limit, Lanta, do you think that means um, work that you produced five years ago? Or, or do you, can you interpret that question for me a bit more? Um, I would say I'm assuming um, what Martin is asking is, for example, if we get a project for um, for the first semester, um, if we have like a brief, I say how long it would take. So we usually get briefs in art sculpture as we got a brief from you, Amanda. Um, it's like it, it, it give, you're kind of given a timetable almost. So you have like, let's say a week or two to come up with an idea what you would like to do for that brief. And then you have, I assume like um, a month or two to work on that and then you get your grade and then you move on to semester two with a new brief um if that answers the question um yeah i think if, sorry if um, and, yeah i think that was exactly what it was because looking at the timing when martin put that question in you were talking about uh you were talking about the different semesters and working in teams and stuff so yeah that sounds right um yeah it, it definitely depends well, I was just going to jump in and say sometimes we give really quick, we give very quick briefs because we want students to start working very quickly, and then as they kind of develop and and, uh, and get more into the, the 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 term, we actually give longer briefs that we want to see a whole range of outcomes that people have time to develop through them. So actually, it varies uh, depending on what stage we are in the term and what we're hoping that people will achieve out of it. But the learning outcomes are completely matched to the duration of the brief. So there's no way we assign something to, to, a, to a student or group of students that they couldn't finish within the time frame. Okay, uh, there's a few questions about portfolios. Um, would a sketchbook count as one piece in a portfolio? Alant, I missed the start of that. Sorry, um, question from Sophie. Would, would a sketchbook count as one piece in a portfolio? Yeah, absolutely. It really depends how you want to shape this thing out. If if I go back um, to something like this, imagine that you had a number of pages from your sketchbook. Let's ignore this stuff here on the right and just said you had one, two, three, four, five, you know, six drawings from your sketchbook. That's one piece. Um, what you might want to do is pull out images that maybe have a thematic relationship to each other and lay them out as one piece. Um, but please also feel that you could actually have uh, a, port a number of portfolio pages or portfolio collage pages. So it is up to you to be quite selective. Um, and and I'm, I'm saying here, think carefully what to include and how best to organize it. Um, but yes, the, the work you've been developing and generating in your sketchbook fantastic if you show it to us and show it to us in whatever arrangement you think is most appropriate because you may have a number of ideas in your sketchbook that actually are related to a piece that you finished and maybe in terms of a sequence you might want to show us a couple of those pages then show you show us the finished piece so that might be a kind of a nice narrative arc that goes through your portfolio okay um there's another question from alice i'm just going to read this out uh, so for portfolios and sketchbooks, is the main aim to have a portfolio with lots of ideas, more technological things ra rather than drawings, paintings or things that, that are looked for in animation portfolio? Um, we would tell you, don't try to second guess what we want. We're expecting you'll come to college and you'll learn a lot. If you were a ready formed finished thing, you'd never need to come to art college. So please don't feel that you need to throw an awful lot of technology or techniques to us. And um, we would say, and we do recognize that a lot of people don't have access to all the kind of resources you might otherwise have in college. And um, you can generate a fantastic portfolio using you know, pencils, colors, collage, photography, and you do not have to show us really high-end technical stuff. 
if you happen to already be working in that and you have those resources, then by all means show us that because that's what your passion is. But ultimately, we were we are looking for very very similar things, and um, no matter what you really kind of show out show to us, and we will find that in anything in your portfolio. And um, we would like like to see tests and experimentation. We'd like to see observation, and that observation is often most clearly apparent in kind of studies in drawing in studies in color in studies in thinking about how physically things work in the world how sculptural objects might stand up and um, so we do pref prefer to see at some level in your portfolio some commitment to observation that might come through drawing or might come through photography but actually you can show us how you're looking at the world so i wouldn't skip that component of it and um, you don't have to work in every single medium. Um, and, and, but it's nice if you can show us you've tried a few things. You know, if you've done some uh, kind of lead pencil sketches that you also work in colored pencils or you work with kind of line and wash, that you can show us that you're kind of comfortable experimenting and testing a cost of range of things because we are looking for people who are open to experimenting and trying other things and not just the thing that they were always really good at in the past. Um, Another thing I might say to you on that topic is if you've got interests outside of your studies, you know, if you're interested in poetry or dance or writing or drama, um, please let that show in your portfolio. Um, we're really keen to see a kind of broader and rounder, more rounded version of who you are. So don't feel like you shouldn't include that. If you happen to design kind of handout magazines in your spare time, you know, show us that. Um, there is a question from Emer. Do you need to write a piece about yourself in your portfolio? Yeah, we do have um, in the online portfolio, you can upload a CV and we do ask you to upload a short uh, little text, which is a kind of rationale for your work. And the guidelines for that are all very clear. We're not looking for a CV like, you know, if, as though you were doing a job interview. But if you happen to have done some jobs or worked on certain projects, and, um, you know, again, if you've, if you've worked in a drama society or if you've um, been part of some kind of organization, again, it, those things really help us to see a, the kind of person you are, the kind of interest and motivation you have. Um, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. I wouldn't sweat it too much. I'd really put most of your effort into your into your portfolio itself. Um, there is a question from Hannah. Sorry, this is a stupid question. My, my portfolio is more so how I developed my observation into a theme and developed on that. Is that OK? Sorry again. Thanks so much. Um, there's no stupid questions. Um, so basically what you're saying is that you've uh, done some work in your portfolio and it's developed through a particular theme. Um, I'm not sure how many themes you've got in your portfolio. You've got one theme. Um, I'm actually I'm a little confused about the question. Are you saying is it OK if you've got a theme or? Sorry, Atlanta, could you just repeat the question for me? Okay, uh, my portfolio is more so how I developed my observation into a theme and developed on that. Is that okay? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm having to guess, but I'm, I'm guessing that you're, you've been very observant, you're looking around the world, you've got something that you're interested in, and you found a way to extend and develop that into a theme. That's exactly what we're looking for. Yes, fantastic. Not a stupid question. Look forward to seeing it. Um, and there's a question from Alice. What's a day in the life of an art student like? <laughs> um, well, Alanta, to, over to you. Um, it's a good, um, I don't know, it's like, it's very enjoyable. So you you have class, so from, I'm just gonna say what I had in second year. Um, so you have class at 10 a.m. You attend, then you do a few classes, a few hours of, for example, if you have with your tutors, um, like a little workshop, like metal and wood workshop or some mold making. And then you have your break and um, you can have coffee break, which is great. Kind of get yourself some energy. And then you have you go back to your um, uh, work, let's say if you do workshop or you have your own personal work, uh, personal project. And then you get an hour break for lunch. So you go to the student cafeteria so you can get food. The food is actually really great. Um, also really good student friendly prices 
um, and then after your break you can hang out with your friends and then you go back to your studio and you can work on from what you were working on and it's basically every day and then once a week you have art history so I had art history on Friday mornings um, so it was a great way to finish your week for a few hours and then you just head back home for the weekend so if that kind of it's like a quick brief it's really like you have enough time to work on your personal work as well which is great it might be a bit stressful sometimes but that's just um it's it really the tutors are great if you need more time or if some, there's a problem you can talk to them and it's great um so yeah, and you have your own studio space as well and you have your own table and there's enough space and you can get materials so yeah <laughs> if that answers Alanta, would you say a little bit um, about your time in Erasmus in Helsinki and what the flow of your day like was there, what your the flow of your day was like in that college? Uh, yeah, so I did my first semester of third year in Helsinki um, in Finland. Sorry, my head on there. Um, so I did sculpture. So because of COVID, I was able to experience um, as normal students would experience there, like in classes and seeing one-to-one -one with the tutors. So I had online classes mostly, but, but I also got the experience of going to workshops and stuff. Um, it was really great. I, I got to see how art colleges work there, uh, which is really different and it was great. And I got to learn new equipment, how to use, for example, the big massive kilns or how to uh, use the massive machinery for cutting wood. Um, one of my favorites was electronics, which I've never done, and I would—I was too intimidated to, to even go near electronics. Um, and I had such a great time, and I bring—I brought that back here. So now I'm working on my own personal project using electronics. Um, yeah, and I got to meet great people from all over the world. Um, got to learn Finnish, which I can't really remember much now because <laughs> it's—but it's great. I still remember a few words, but yeah, and I got to experience a different culture and the tutors are amazing and I follow, I follow them on Instagram, so I'm still in touch with them, which is great. Um, highly recommend if you're actually thinking about it, you can start doing Erasmus from second year, um, second year and third year, I assume. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I wish I, I would have extended because now, um, but yeah, I had an amazing time. Um, yeah, and I learned great techniques. Alanta, I'm a little concerned about the time and I'm, I'm concerned that maybe I haven't fully communicated the difference between an online portfolio and the virtual portfolio um, or the virtual project days. So uh, maybe I can just jump on about that. Maybe while we've been talking, you've been able to see the slides on the portfolio tips. And um, I just want to jump in to explain what's, what, what your options are. Um, you have an option to, and this is the main entry into the co college, is to submit through an online portfolio. We do have a virtual project day that is mostly for people who have had difficulty in putting together an online portfolio for a number of reasons. It may be that they didn't have an art class in their school or a conflict. It, the, the time art was scheduled conflicted with their with their, another course they were taking, or they may have decided very late that they realized they really did want to go to art school and they hadn't chose art as a subject. So we're trying to catch uh, or provide an opportunity for people who didn't have that traditional route and haven't been able to develop a, a, non, a portfolio. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. So, but let me just say that our, our online portfolio is the primary way that people apply to this college. And um, you must, whether you're doing the virtual drawing day or whether you're doing the online portfolio, you must actually put it down on the CAO and that must happen by February the 1st. There's no other way to apply to the college. There's no other entryway unless you do that. So all I can do is repeat, repeat, repeat. You must ap apply through the CAO by February the 1st. If you don't, there's absolutely nothing we can do. That's a national system. There's no intervention in it. It will be 2022 before you can next apply. So please do have a good look at that and make sure you get your application in by February the 1st. 
On the college website, you will see a huge amount of resources. There's a, a link to our digital portfolio submission. There's a video here that tells you how to go through and develop your digital portfolio. There's a um, video on how to photograph your works for it. Uh, there's a PDF you can download, tips for photographing your digital portfolio. There's IDT portfolio guidelines, that's another PDF. And then um, we'll get to it in a second, but there's a PDF you can download explaining the project day and the brief. So please go to this address, which is uh, iadt.ie slash study slash portfolio guidelines, or else just go to Google and Google IADT portfolios, and it'll dump you on this page. There is loads of resources further on down, videos, everything like that. So please don't forget that. And um, what I want to tell you is that the portfolio is now live you can start to upload. You don't have to have a finished portfolio. You can upload piece by piece. It is only when you've kind of completed all that and you finally hit submit that the whole portfolio is registered. So do please get started and you can move your stuff around and see how you want it to, 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 to play out. But in order to do that, you need to have your CAO number. So the sequence is to apply to the CEO, get your CAO number, and then start working through your portfolio. The deadline is absolutely 5 p.m. on the 18th of March. So that's your timeline between now and then. Once you have applied through the CAO, even whether you say you're interested in the virtual drawing day or not, you will be contacted by our admissions team, letting you know when the virtual project days are on, should you be interested. Now, let me explain what, that, what that's about. And I'll just reiterate key dates again. You have to apply through the CAO. Um, and the portfolio deadline is the 18th of March. Now, here's something I want to flag to people, because some people might have left it too late. Some people might be not be particularly happy with their portfolio, but they really want to go to art school next year. You can, um, by the time the 18th of March, when the portfolio deadline, you will ha have already had the chance to attend the virtual project days, and you will actually have generated work out of the virtual project, project days. So it is possible, to jump straight, apply to the CAO, attend the virtual project day on the 15th or 17th of February, submit your work on the 19th of February, you will get a score back from that within two to three weeks. Uh, if you don't like your score, you can then go ahead and submit your portfolio on the 18th of March. So there's a sequence there if you feel like you're not possibly prepared and there's a risk that you might not get everything you need in the portfolio. Um, you don't, if you're happy with your scores, you don't have to put, submit a portfolio. However, we do encourage that you do submit the portfolio. Uh, you don't know what the competition is like. You don't know what, you know, if you get a score of 400, is that going to be enough to get you into the course or not? So we would encourage you to do both if that's what you're going to do. And um, but so even if you and if, if you have done the project day, you can also include the work you've done on the project day as part of your online portfolio. But no matter what you do, if you go with the straightforward online portfolio, or you go the virtual project day, or you go with both, you still only will get a maximum of 600 points, out of a max of 600 points. You can't combine them and get six in one and six in the other. It's, it's, it'll, it'll, whichever is the highest score will count. Um, Alanta, will you keep an eye on the chat to see if there's any particular questions about that? And um, so I'm going to just reiterate our, our standard approach is to go by the online portfolio. If you feel that's going to be a problem for you, you're not going to have it ready. We would encourage you to try and sign up for the um, virtual uh, project day. But in order for that to happen, you must have applied to the CAO by the 1st of February. And that option will be presented to you automatically by the college admission team. So. The portfolio, the online portfolio, is something you submit and you can start straight away once you've got your CAO number and you can start working on that. If you want to know more about the virtual project days, you need to sign up to that too. And um, you need to look at our portfolio guidelines booklet. Um, and I will uh, talk to that in a second. But basically, um, if you don't have a portfolio that you really feel strongly about, you should do the virtual project day. You will be asked to do a brief. You'll be asked to complete some work in advance. And, and then during the project day, you will be asked to complete a series of tasks. And then you must submit the combination of those two things onto the online portal by the 19th of February. But basically we're saying you can attend both. You can attend the virtual project day, you can submit a digital portfolio, 
and the highest grade achieved in either will be your final score for the course. I'll just quickly say a bit about the brief. I, uh, I did say, um, if you do the virtual portfolio, you'll be given a brief that you must do in advance. And, and the brief is available on the website, which you need to download. You'll be given three particular themes, homes slash environments, identities, or light space and time. So you really need to think which of those themes would suit you, which would you like to work on? And the next thing you're given a format, you may work all these ideas on an A1 sheet, a box, um, a photo book. Maybe you're working on some animated GIFs or short videos. And um, maybe you're working on a load of Instagram pages. Um, but basically, you're given a format. And then you're kind of given a number of tasks. Now, I've cut off the page here, but you're asked to think through a number of ideas, whether it's research, process, or whatever. So in a way, that's your recipe to construct all of this work. And all I can do, because we're so running out of time, is tell you to go have a look at that on the website. And you complete that work, and then you will also attend a one-day project day when there will be lectures there, and they will give you lots of exercises to work through. You'll combine those two works, and you'll upload those as your portfolio. But they have to be uploaded on the 19th of February, and that gives us time to get you a score back within two to three weeks. If you're not happy with the score, you think it won't get you into the college, then you need to submit onto the, the, the standard digital portfolio. So sorry that was a bit fast, and I hope that makes sense. Um, great. So now, Alanta, can we work through what questions are still outstanding? Yeah, there's a few questions for the portfolio. Um, the, there's one question, is it necessary to have a set theme? Um, again, we'd say the same thing. Um, it's not necessary to have a set theme, but sometimes when you sit down to work on a portfolio, maybe it's helpful to you. It really depends on where you've been at. If you've been working through uh, a number of projects in class, if you've been working through a number of projects with your teacher, or you've been a, doing a life drawing course or whatever, you may have a number of works that are kind of similar to each other. And um, you may have worked in a number of different kind of media. So a theme could be a whole lot of pencil sketches or uh, line and wash sketches. So it's not necessary to have a theme. We do understand that some people submit a, a, a project for NCAD and we'll be quite happy to accept that project and um, that you submit as your work and that will be kind of fairly thematic up, uh, along the guidelines for what that project is. Um, so yeah, we, we'd like to see your thinking, I suppose, over a couple of pieces, but we don't absolutely say you must have a theme. Um, so it is really up to you and your personal vision for how you want to communicate ideas. If you've got a strong thematic, if you've got a number of works that were all made about tomatoes, you've got a number of works that were all made about the color red, I guess you're going to want to group them. But we're not going to tell you to make a number of works about tomatoes or the color red or whatever. So really, you show off to us. We're really looking forward to see what you can offer us. Okay, there's another one um, about teaching, secondary school te uh, teaching. I'm thinking of becoming an art secondary school teacher, but there doesn't seem to be a big demand. Would this, would this course help me get into an art teaching? Um, yeah, um, one of the things with our new change of curriculum, the new uh, uh, course that's been rolled out, is that every student in third year will now be doing um, work placement. A number of, we are ex looking at ways by which a number of our students can actually do work placement that would involve their experience in relation to teaching. So that is something we're very definitely wanting to build into the program. Um, your question about, um, and, I, and I know it's quite difficult to maybe to get onto an art teaching course or to get a, um, to get a job in, in teaching, we can't guarantee you that, but what we can say is that we will position you in such a way as that you can get some teaching experience through the, through the, through the placement. Now, that, might, that placement could be fairly dynamic. You could end up working in a gallery on a Saturday morning, you know, helping you know, a, 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 a young children's group uh, learn about the works in the museum. Um, you could maybe attend in a classroom. We, we, there'll, be, there'll be a number of different ways that that can be framed out. And that might open out what your possibilities are into the future where you actually work. Maybe you, you would work in a hospital setting. Maybe you would try to get working in a national school. Um, there might be a range of possibilities. So all I can say is, yes, we're bringing the work placement um, on uh, in, in, in the third year of the programme for people to get that kind of experience. Um, and also, what are the point uh, points requirements? 
Um, the maximum you can get out of the portfolio is 600. So it's a combination of your portfolio points and your leaving cert points that get joined together. Um, when you add those two things together, um, I don't know last year's CAO figures, but I would expect anybody getting like 600 or 550 or 400 and that kind of combination would be getting a place on the art course. Um, but I really don't have those figures to hand right now and I don't know if Sonia can chip in on that um, but it's a combination of those two things so when you get your feed let's say you get your numbers back from the virtual uh, drawing day and you're kind of anticipating what you might get in your lead insert you add those two scores and see how close they come to 600 um, and anything of above uh, 400 is obviously very good yeah, the minimum points last year were 572, but the median points were 941. So, um, yeah, so we had some people score like really highly. So they would have maybe got 600 points in their portfolio and then they got three, um, 341 in their leaving cert or their RPLs, the recognized prior learning. So, yeah, so you'd be looking between six and or between 590 and 650, 700 points. And that's in combination of the two, your leading cert and the portfolio. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Okay, there's um, another question. Uh, do we need to show a lot of figure and life drawings in the portfolio? Um, you don't need to. Um, this is really going to be down to what kind of resources you've had available. In the past, some people might have done a, a, a PLC course or a portfolio preparation course, and they would have had access to a life model where they would have been able to sketch from life. And um, often, um, if you're working through your uh, art course in, in secondary school, um, you'd probably be set projects whereby you sketch and draw other people in your class. If you're interested in figurative work, the chances are you might be sitting at home drawing your brother, sister, aunt, uncle, uh, nephew, niece. Um, you may not be interested in figures. You may prefer to work in drawing and landscape. Um, you know, it's really, it's, it's a combination of what your resources are available and what your interests are. But if you have figurative work, yes, we'd love to see it because again, it's like that observation from life. It's like looking at, you know, a live figure and trying to look at what the shape is, what the outline is, what the tonality, what the, that quality is. Um, but we won't say, oh no, we've turned on this portfolio because there's no figurative drawing. We're really open to getting a range of stuff in and we totally appreciate that different people have different resources available to them. Um, and is there an option to take a deferral? I'm going to pass this one to Sonia because uh, I'm not sure what the situation on that is. Maybe Sonia can answer it. Yeah, so there are deferral options, but I would really highly check with um, our admissions team. And uh, what I can do, Cara, is I can have Anne contact you directly about that. Um, some courses have, I can say, 100%. Absolutely, we will offer deferral if it's requested, but some of our creative and art courses, um, there's a limit to how much we can defer because we have, uh, there's there's so few places uh, in terms of um, the following year, we can't guarantee that we'd be able to offer it. So um, let me get that back to you, let me get admissions to come back to you, okay? Thanks. Um, and what kind of jobs do graduates uh, get usually after leaving IEDT? Um, we have uh, graduates working in a whole range of disciplines and I'm going to jump back to my very, very first slide, uh, if I can. Um, we have graduates who are working as contemporary artists. Uh, that is what they're going to do as their life choices. And um, we have a number of graduates who have gone on to work in the fields of curation. They work in galleries and museums, both in Ireland and around the world. Um, we have had a number of people who've kind of uh, studied uh, practical art making, have gone on to become art critics, have worked as art administrators, and have gone into arts writing, have gone into publishing and criticism. And we'd have a lot of graduates who have kind of crossed over into kind of digital technologies. And maybe they would have specialized a little bit in that. 
in their time in college and then use those skills to get themselves launched into a slightly different field. And um, we have a number of uh, graduates who go on in, into kind of more academic posts whereby they would do a master's course and maybe then switch into a PhD. Uh, we have people who teach, who have taught, gone on to teach at third level. Um, it, people sometimes have a very hybrid career. It's, it is genuinely, we know it's difficult to have a full-time career as a practicing artist. So people will often combine that. They'll have a practicing artist, uh, uh, they'll, have, they'll have a practice as an artist where they uh, apply and compete for uh, Arts Council bursaries, where they compete for publicly funded projects. And, and they also have work in another job where they, maybe they work in a museum archive or they work in a library. They work in some kind of affiliated area. Um, and we have people who, who move into, um, you know, theatre and film. Um, so there's a whole range of kind of culture industries that people will move into using that skill sets that they developed over the course of their arts degree. Um, and there is a similar question too. Um, what are the main career opportunities and is it always difficult to make a career out of art? Um, if you want to be 100% a practicing artist with a studio, it is difficult. It is very difficult. Uh, I would say that if you look at maybe uh, the art world globally, um, a huge amount of artists maybe at a higher level would actually be funded a lot through philanthropy. If you look at like the US, whereby very wealthy, you know, hyper wealthy uh, patrons will actually support they're kind of patrons of the arts um, and, and they support museums and, and they support artists' careers. We don't tend to have philanthropy in Ireland and we also don't tend to have a very strong network of con uh, commercial galleries. There are maybe, I don't know, maybe about five galleries that travel to international art fairs that would sell work of artists uh, above a, a figure of a 20,000 um, price tag. Um, so it is an economy of scale. Uh, we do see people who become practicing artists tend to travel a bit. They may move to London, they may move to Berlin, they may be, have a fairly uh, transitory lifestyle as they go around and kind of work on different residencies and uh, follow opportunities to kind of fund their practice. So definitely it's hard and it's rewarding, but I definitely think people go on to have kind of hybrid or kind of more entrepreneurial careers where they find ways to make a living in, in parallel fields at the same time as they keep their practice going. There are some people who do, who get jobs as, as lecturers in art schools. The, there are some people who become art curators, um, but I won't pretend that I know that there are a huge amount of opportunities for you to work in your studio, sell through a gallery and, and, and make a very good living on that. That isn't the nature of the art world. But I will say, if you're prepared to put in the work and prepared to be entrepreneurial, there definitely are opportunities that you can um, find a way to work through. Um, and there's a few questions for Erasmus. Um, what countries are an offer to study abroad? Are there any options in Asia? Um, it depends for the countries. Um, uh, it depends also what course you're studying. But there's um, on IDT website, there's a link. There's like a little, t a little table telling you the countries and the languages. Uh, but about Asia, I've actually no idea because uh, the Erasmus coordinator is Elena Somoza, so she might be able to answer. Um, and, and I also, I'm not sure, and I have a feeling that Erasmus is European, because that was part of the problem with Brexit. A lot of UK university students were very upset now that they would no longer be able to access Erasmus. Um, IDT has relationships with France, Hungary, uh, Italy, Finland, Sweden. Um, and I know that we did have a, a person uh, build a collaboration through Istanbul and Turkey. Um, but I have a feeling it, it may be um, connected to Europe. And, and Europe as its wider sense. Um, but I think it may be a European initiative. I could be wrong, but that's my sense because I do remember that complaint about uh, students in Britain. Yeah, because I, I assume, because Elena, because Elena said, I remember, if there is a country, a particular college that you really want to attend, that you can actually try to create the relationship and ask the college itself. Um, that's, I'm not too sure about that, but I know there's some students that really wanted to, to go for, to Germany 
and it was a bit um you just have to be okay you just have to Elena really helps out with that I'll, I'll, I'll just google that the Erasmus program it means European Community Action Scheme for the Mobility of University Students so it's a European Union EU student exchange program so I think that answers the question it is a European initiative um, there's also a question what uh, what university I attended in Helsinki uh, I should have mentioned uh, Kuva University of Fine Arts Helsinki um, yeah it's a really cool it's like a it's an art fine art and music academy like three academies in one three different buildings but yeah it's Kuva yeah um, and I think hopefully I didn't miss any questions I think that's everything There was just one question, Amanda. Um, it, it fell into the school one uh, or the teaching one. When you get your undergraduate, it's, this isn't exactly word for it, but when you get your undergraduate degree, do you have to do a second course, a one year course to enable yourself to teach in Ireland? Is it a HDIP? Um, it is. Yeah, yeah. So you can have your undergraduate degree, but then you need to go. Uh, it would be somewhere like um, uh, St. Patrick's and do your HDIP for a year, wouldn't it, to teach? Um, no, uh, MPD have a, uh, have a course from that. Um, okay. um, well, actually, sorry, I'm, I'm just Googling that, but I know there's a professional Master of Education in NCAD and the award is credited by the Teaching Council of Ireland. Um, that's where I have heard of students who, who want to specialise in teaching take that course in NCAD. So I would, um, if you're interested, uh, Google that. It's a professional master of education in art and design. Um, and it's a two-year master's programme that leads to a professional qualification to teach art and design at second level. So I think you must have that particular qualification. Okay, excellent. I don't see any other questions there. Well, uh, I would say thank you to everybody for lasting so long. Um, I just want to reiterate what I said at the start. Making your portfolio is really exciting. Um, being brave, stepping out and putting it out in the world, sharing with us, your professional colleagues. Um, it's a real big step up and it's a rite of passage that we've all gone through. And please understand, we're actually delighted to receive them. We're really looking forward to seeing what you have to communicate, say to us. And welcome to the professional art world. We look forward to seeing you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. Bye.